We made it to the final module of NCCR core. This is module nine, material handling. It's a kind of common sense, but some stuff, if you haven't done it before, you have it, you just may not know the best technique to make it the easiest way. And so I've heard people say that carrying stuff is 80% um, of the job of a construction worker, material handling, because you're always moving stuff around. You put it together, but even if you put it together and they have to move it again, and so you're just carrying a lot of weight, a lot, moving things around. And so you want to do things the right way. You don't want to get hurt. Don't want to hurt your body. If you're using equipment, you don't want to have anything crash and break. And so it's just um, knowing the basics of how to just be a good material handler is going to set you up really good for all industries, no matter what it is, because if you're a carpenter or a plumber, electrician, everyone, you got tools, you got materials, you got equipment, everything needs to get moved around. And so some, just some basics to preventing injuries when you're getting started is just make sure you pre-plan. Don't just pick something up and not know what you're doing. Um, it's really frustrating when you pick something up and you're ready to nail it off and you realize you left the nail gun on the ground. You're already up the ladder with the heavy thing that's on your shoulder. So you gotta put it, climb back down, risk that, then carry it back up. So make sure you're just ready to go. Know what route, if you're carrying something, where you're carrying it to. Because lots of times you can't necessarily see great where you're walking because something bulky is impairing your vision. And so have a planned out path, make sure there's nothing in your way. Check to make sure there's just nothing sticking out of it. It's really, when you go to pick up a heavy board and there's a nail and you put your hand right on it, that nail's gonna, when the weight hits it, that nail really hurts. So just make sure you're pre-planning ahead of time. Um, and size up the weight too. Sometimes you think you're gonna be able to pick it up and you can't, they already have it up on a shoulder or something. It's too heavy and it hurts you. Um, so just do some pre-planning. Think about it before you pick up these heavy things. So again, assess the situation, make sure you're wearing appropriate clothing. You shouldn't be carrying something super heavy while wearing flip-flops, right? Cause it's probably gonna, you're gonna trip, break an ankle and you'll drop the heavy thing on top. So you don't wanna do that. So when you're picking things up, you want to, the book wants to, how they describe it is always use your legs, right? See how he's not just bending at the waist, use your legs. And the trick is you keep your back straight. And how you do that is you always look straight ahead. Don't look down at the ground, look ahead as you stand up. And that'll keep everything in line. And see how he gets it onto his leg here. Also, there's all kinds of different ways you can use your body for leverage, but a great one is from this position, if you can just get it onto your thigh, your leg's pretty strong. You can use that as leverage then to get it up to your waist. And once it's onto your waist, you're good to go. You want to avoid twisting. Once you have this weight, you want to stay in a straight line. Don't rotate your back. That's where most accidents, accidents happen. Back injuries is the twisting motion. So you want to keep it straight in front of you. Don't let the weight get off your center of balance. And sometimes, there are explosive movements. A big bulky box like this might not help, but sometimes if you're an explosive movement to get it up, it's easier because now it's at a manageable position where it's already you're already in a standing position. And so think of a power clean, right? There's no way they're doing that weight if they're going really slow, but it's that quick explosive jerk motion where they get it up to their shoulders. And then again, another explosive where they get it up above your head. And so think of weightlifting that way. Um, and just the best ergonomics to get things picked up. You'll see me explain that in a different video on just how to pick things up. For lowering a load, this is when something's already above your head or something on a shelf, make sure it's not too heavy. Um, it's really bad if you pick something up and it's too heavy and it crushes the underneath. So just make sure. And then also think about everything around you. What can you drop it potentially on? So pay attention, you, if you fell and the load you're hauling, where could it fall? So stacking things, some basics. Um, again, we stack all kinds of stuff because if you spread it all out, it doesn't work. And so you're just gonna stack it up and there's some details here. So when it gets to above four feet, you want to start making that pyramid shape where you're bringing it in closer. You don't want it to be, um, you don't wanna go higher than that four feet and a maximum of seven feet because higher than that, imagine that brick falling off and hitting your head. So you're going to start doing the pyramid after four feet. And if there's a picture, this is kind of like it. Um, if you see how they have it alternating the blocks back and forth. And so you don't just stack all your blocks in a straight row, but when you do 
interlocking like this, it holds them together. And so that prevents them from falling over. It's a lot stronger of a tower. And so same thing if they have any, I don't know if they have a picture of it. They don't have a picture of it, but if you're stacking like bags of concrete or bags of sand, loose bags is called cross keying, which means you're just alternating the directions. You aren't doing it all on top. So you put one, usually it's two bags is the same, it's the other direction. But two bags wide is one long. And so again, just like these bricks are stacked, you're going to alternate them back and forth. So that's called cross key. And so you never want to stack stuff up in the air. So if you have scaffold, don't put a big pile of something on a scaffold or in a walkway where someone's going to knock it over, right? You want to put it off to the side where it's least likely to get hit, least likely to get knocked over. Now carts and dollies, when you're using carts, they make life a whole lot easier. So when using any kinds of carts or dollies. Make sure you're being extra careful since these things are on wheels. When you're on an incline or decline, be careful. Make sure you're able to stop and it's not going to get away from you. Don't take a, put less weight on it because it's going to want to roll down the hill faster. It'll be harder to push up. And so the big danger isn't necessarily going up. The danger is when you're going down. You don't want to let it get away from you. So again, just pay attention. Make things Sure, your stack is pretty stable. Don't make it really high where it's going to wobble back and forth. These things, every wheel of those, go, every bump those wheels go over, you might want to crash or fall on you. So, when using a, when you're moving around these gas cylinders, this is called a um, cylinder cart, and so you just want to use the proper thing because you can actually see how you can latch this on. That prevents it from falling off the side. Here we have different kinds of carts and different dollies. Um, this you scoop it up and then you lean it back as a special kind of cart, all kinds of different things. Pipe mules. So a pipe mule is it's designed to carry pipe. Um, a mule is a, another word for like wheelbarrow or something. That's where I, it comes for the animal, right? A pack mule. That's what carry things around. So it looks like this. And so this makes the leverage easy. Sometimes you can just chain it and you're actually suspending the pipe between the two. And then you just lean it. Then you just pick up this side and with leverage, it just makes it easy to move it around. Let's see. So when you're using powered things, make sure you're trained to do them. Don't just hop on them. I have a funny story I'll share briefly about a concrete mule. Before that, um, one of the things that we didn't talk about in the carts, there's a thing called roller skids, and they kind of look like a, think of a big car jack that has wheels on it, but they're made to be moved around. Whereas car jacks can move, but you're not, they're not made to move with weight, whereas a roller skid is. And so the book mentions that there are different types of tops. There are ones that have pins in it and different things so that it's non-slip. So there's just a roller skid is another kind of cart you can move things around on. So, concrete mule. So I was using one of these. They're kind of fun. They go really fast. Um, and you stand on the back and how you turn, if you can see this handle here, it just turns this wheel in the center. So it's kind of like a reverse bicycle. But you stand on the back and this is how you steer. And then this lever, it dumps your concrete. And so the job was over. I was just across the parking lot. We were washed out the, all the concrete stuff out of it in the, in the field on the side. And so it was a wide open parking lot. So I was like, I'll open this thing up full throttle because I'm just curious how fast does this thing actually go. And so the throttle control is on the grip of the handle and you just squeeze it with your thumb like a motorcycle. And so the tighter you squeeze, the faster you go. So I start shooting myself across the parking lot and I hit a pothole. And so the pothole, how I was standing, it kicked my legs off the back side of it. And so what do you do? You, you hold on with your hands, which is the handle, which is also the throttle. And so I had to hold on tighter, which means I pulled the throttle even harder. So I ended up going full speed and my feet are hanging off the back and this is what turns you. And so then I slid off to one side. So I turned it really sharp. And so I ended up spinning in a really tight circle and it's like a, the marigold round ride at a, at a park as a kid. I don't know if you had those, but where you sit on it and your friends spin you really fast and you end up like your legs shoot out the side. So I'm hanging on and we're going a really tight circle and basically it's my legs are spinning around off the ground. I'm hovering and it eventually I lost my grip and it shoots me off to the side. No one saw it. It was just me out in the parking lot. Super embarrassing. It hurt a little bit, 
thankfully I didn't get any serious injury, but it was more just my ego, my confidence was bruised. But so don't go full throttle in a parking lot is the lesson to be learned. These things do go quick and just be careful. Um, and they're also, there's a learning curve on them. When you're driving them, it's hard to come to a gradual stop and the concrete guys really get angry if you slosh the concrete on their backs. I've also done that. Um, but they're a lot of fun. It makes it it's a whole lot better than just pushing it by a regular wheelbarrow. But make sure you get trained. Forklifts, though, if you work in a warehouse, you might get, or like Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get forklift certified. Um, pretty fun to drive, pretty easy. The biggest thing is just paying attention. It's weird because it's the load isn't the same size as your vehicle. And they also, they steer from the back. And so it's just a different means of driving. It's not like driving a car. So you just have to get used to it. It's almost like you're always driving in reverse. How a car maneuvers when you're backing up, that's how this maneuvers when you're driving forward. And so you just got to get used to that. But they're also zero turn, basically. They turn really sharp, different things. Signals for forklifts. Uh, everyone has their own different signals. This one right here, always know this, this is basically stop. This is emergency. If it's a crane, if it's a forklift, if it's any kind of equipment, it's just stop. And so then different companies have different signals to go up or down. Just know how to do stop. And then also just be aware of um, like what's going to be your pause, your dog, usually something like this, your fist or like this. This means this pause what you're doing. And then when you're working with forklifts, you are going to pay attention because how they lift thing is this mask is straight up in the air. And so the fall zone um, or what's it called? The yeah, the fall zone is anywhere where something when you're picking it up and it could drop where it could hit. So think you're having a box and you're picking that straight up, that fall zone is increasing because now the box isn't just falling a foot in front of you, it's way up here. So if it falls, it's now gonna fall way over here. And so you just wanna make sure those areas stay clean so you don't get hurt. If you go into Lowe's and you see how they block off the aisles, that's because they're protecting the fall zone. They don't want any customers in there to get anything dropped on. They also make forklifts that are made to go off-road. They have huge knobby tires and you, lots of times they use these almost like a crane on job sites. I've gotten to drive both kinds of forklifts. Um, they're a lot of fun. You just got to pay attention when you're on rough terrain because think it's bouncy. On a smooth concrete surface, even if there's a little bump, it's not too bad, but there could be a big ditch or a soft spot in the ground. And so if you have a really heavy load and all of a sudden one tire drops, um, that's really going to bounce your load. It can make you flip over or it could just make you bounce the load off. I've done that. I had a huge load of little brackets for a metal building and I tried to hop the curve. Um, because I had to, to get up into the building, but instead of doing it slow, I was like, well, I'll just gun it. So I'd make sure I don't get stuck on the curb. And I was young and stupid. And so I made it over the curve, but I also threw all those metal pieces all over the ground. And then I had to spend the next hour cleaning them up. So you live and you learn, um, but just pay attention to that. And so a trick when you're carrying the load and you're on a bumpy soil is you keep it really low. The lower it is, the lower the center of gravity or the lower mass gravity anyways scientifically physics it's less light it's not as top heavy so it's not going to fall over keep the loads as low as possible when driving them around and that is what you need to know when you're doing hand signals um, back to that slide make sure you can actually see the driver if you're doing hand signals and they can't see you and so sometimes with forklifts with the stuff in front of you gets in the way or on the outs the ones for off uh, for rough terrain, the arm is actually next to you. It's not in the front. It actually sticks out to the side, um, like a boom forklift. And so you can't see to the left. You only can see out to the right and straight ahead. So make sure you're just standing. If you're the signal guy, always be standing where he can see you. And there we go. That is material handling.